On this show, I talk a lot about modernist cuisine, but I've never stopped to define what modernist cuisine is. So on this episode of Modern Kitchen, I want to spell out some of the facts and debunk some of the myths about this approach to cooking. The modernist philosophy applied to cooking emphasizes the pursuit of the most delicious, technically exquisite food possible. In the past, some people have used the awkward phrase molecular gastronomy to refer to this approach to cooking. This label is meaningless from a scientific point of view. All food is made of molecules, and modernist chefs don't actually manipulate ingredients molecule by molecule the way that, say, molecular biologists do. Modernist cuisine is a much better term because it reflects the avant-garde approach of rebelling against culinary rules of the past, much like the modernist revolution that transformed the arts in the 20th century. Like any revolution, modernist cooking is controversial and we've received a lot of criticisms. Maybe the most common is, hey, you're putting chemicals into my food. Well, you got us. There are chemicals in your food. Okay, okay. We know that this objection really is to putting artificial chemicals in your food. But the fact is that refined ingredients have been part of home cooking for centuries now. When you bake muffins, do you hesitate before reaching for the box of baking soda? There's no such thing as free range baking soda, you know. Baking soda is a refined chemical, and it even has a scary sounding chemical name, sodium bicarbonate. Anyone who's okay adding sodium bicarbonate to their muffins has no reason to get worked up about adding xanthan gum to their gravy. Sure, your great grandmother probably used baking soda, so it doesn't seem as weird, but almost every ingredient, even baking soda, was foreign at some point. Here's another criticism we often get. You're just manipulating food so much, it isn't food anymore. It's no different than industrial food processing. While industrial food processing and modernist cuisine do both exploit a scientific understanding of food, that's about all they share. Modernist cooks celebrate ingredients, and often the whole reason for using modernist ingredients or equipment is to bring out the essence of what's naturally there. For example, Remember when I showed you how to give your favorite cheeses the melting quality of Velveeta? Well, you know who figured out that trick first? James L. Kraft. The technique involves adding a dash of sodium citrate, an ingredient you might not have heard before. And yes, similar ingredients are used in large-scale food processing. But this ingredient also keeps my favorite locally made cheddar from melting into an oil slick. The modernist way is to honor the foods we love, not to take shortcuts or skimp on quality. Some people have complained that modernist cooking is unnecessarily complicated. They say it's only for fancy chefs or rich people, but not for regular people at home. But this misses the mark, too. Some modernist techniques are actually much simpler and faster, as well as more effective. Like the way we use pressure cookers to make stock in hours instead of days. But some of our methods are more involved than their traditional counterparts because we really care about making the food as delicious and technically perfect as possible. Take our recipe for cryo-fried steak, for example. This recipe came out of a quest to make a steak that has both a perfectly cooked, medium-rare interior from edge to edge and an even golden crust on the outside. There's just no way to achieve that on a grill or a griddle. But you can do it if you use a water bath to cook the steak sous vide, then dunk it in liquid nitrogen to protect the interior from overcooking as you apply that delicious crust in the deep fryer. Does knowing this mean you have to cook every steak this way? Of course not. But before, a perfect steak was impossible, and now it's not. One of the funnier responses we've heard is from people who say, I just like simple, natural foods like pasta and cheese. Now hold on. What part of pasta is natural? It doesn't grow on a pasta tree, you know. Pasta doesn't even vaguely resemble the wheat grain from which it originates. In fact, wheat has to go through a highly elaborate procedure before it even resembles the flour you buy at the grocery store. It's sorted, washed, centrifuged, separated, tempered, steamed, ground, separated again, bleached, and enriched. Then it can go into the dough for your linguine. Other folks say it's not about seeking natural foods, it's about enjoying traditional foods. But this view ignores history. 
What we call traditional cuisine today was once novel and probably not as long ago as you imagine. Take Italian food. It's a favorite of many traditionalists who see it as a deeply authentic, artisanal, homey kind of food. And don't get me wrong, Italian food is wonderful, but it's also a great example of how cuisines are continually evolving. Pasta did not originate in Italy. The Chinese were cooking noodles at least 3,000 years before the Italians. Corn in polenta and chocolate and vanilla in cannoli, they came from the Americas. Potatoes for gnocchi, from South America. Even one of the most iconic ingredients in Italian cooking, the tomato, is an import from the Americas. The point is that changes in culinary traditions may be controversial, but they're also inevitable. We strongly believe that everyone's entitled to their personal culinary preferences. If you want to eat only what you think of as traditional foods and avoid the new stuff, that's your prerogative. If you're philosophically opposed to agar and tapioca maltodextrin and sodium citrate, that's up to you. And if you prefer to grill your steaks over an open flame rather than to cook them with precision in a water bath, we get that. But as you make these choices, keep in mind that every traditional food and technique was once new and unfamiliar. Thanks for watching. If you like what you saw, don't forget to subscribe to Chow and check us out at modernistcuisine.com. Fact, I have eyebrows. Read my lips. No new ingredients.